Good evening, guys, and welcome back once again to the classroom with Architect Mark. Tonight, we're going to be talking about more on cameras and photography. And we'll be focusing on setting up or settings within the cameras, specifically this particular dial right here. It's not the same for all uh cameras of course but there is a general truth shall we say to all of them and we will tackle that right now so let's head on over to the classroom and once again with our blue board oops let's turn that into white for better uh perception and then let me move to my pen and let's get started with our camera settings. Hmm. My pen is a little bit thick right now, so I'll go back to the thinner one and then start our 12 minutes right now. Okay, so when you first get your camera, uh, there is always always an automatic mode on it so if you want to familiarize yourself with framing and the like uh, you can just place it on auto that means when you're on auto everything is decided for you huh? by the uh, by the viewfinder so there are some uh, there is a specific setting that tells the camera what it's looking at and how to identify what settings to use and that's called metering so this is metering influenced and normally uh, uh, these these are the ones that look like these uh, like something like that or something with the cross Or just a uh, spot. So some some camera ma manufacturers use different terms here, but generally these tell the camera uh, to get information from these areas right here, the center, and then the corners. Uh, the center, the corners, and everything in between, or just the center of the frame, or wherever the camera is uh, pointed to at that specific time. That's why sometimes you see uh, photographers going like this. So they, if we're shooting like that, okay, this has a lens, but we're just demoing it anyway. They go like this first, and then go back to the subject or somewhere else that means they're getting uh, they're adjusting the exposure by taking a metering off of another part of the frame and that's that's a technique that uh, it's a fairly common technique and you will definitely learn it eventually when you uh, fiddle around with a, a system camera like this one or at least a camera where you can set uh, some things even your phone your phone also has uh, metering modes depending on the software you're using or the app is generally people don't like to fiddle with this that's why uh, it's made fully automatic by manufacturers 
that's why your camera app only has that one uh, shutter button and that's it everything's automated but you can of course dial into manual if you needed uh, control or you want to exert control over the camera all right so what's next there is of course PAS and each of these talk about one part of the exposure triangle um, A is aperture priority S is shutter speed priority but P actually stands for program uh, which is almost like automatic but yeah I don't I don't really uh subscribe to this one you might as well just use that if you're uh if you're doing it automatically anyway i suppose this allows you to lock some of the settings but i, I normally don't use p uh, these two are the more commonly used ones because they control a ba a very important aspect of uh, shooting like for the aperture priority when you're in that mode you control the aperture and the ISO so well the ISO you can almost control all the time it's separate from the entire uh, dial we have over here but mainly what you will be choosing here is the aperture that you want to shoot at for example you're using a fast lens that has a uh, maximum aperture of let's say 1.2 but you want a a bigger focus plane uh, when you're shooting so you dial it up to like say four or two two is a kind of a sweet spot for photography um so yeah you can go up so that you have control over the focus plane if you want more scene now why would you use shutter speed priority this is for when you're maybe trying out special shots like If you were using lights, your own lights, setting the shutter speed will allow you to uh, open and close the curtain really fast and you get to see just a glimmer or just the object that's lighted or lit, just the object that's lit in that particular instance. So this is used for action shots mostly. While apertures for more dramatic uh, effects. So let's maybe let's put it at like this controls drama and then this controls the action. Kind of like uh, movie genres, yeah. What else? Of course, we have manual, and in this mode, you can control both of these as well as the ISO, which means you have full control over the camera. That means nothing will be selected for you so if you forgot to set 
say one of them of course you have the preview already so you'll see uh what you'll be getting without actually having to press the shutter so that's good and cameras usual cameras now warn you about uh it turns one of the one of the settings red if you're breaching it to get a properly exposed uh photo for example if you're outside in daylight and you try to shoot wide open i'm almost 100 percent certain that the the shutter speed would be blinking like crazy because unless you're using a neutral density filter okay this is a new term for you the nd filter this attaches to the front of the lens uh, or through an attachment and then goes in front of the last lens element and what this does is it cuts down basically the brightness of the overall uh, frame what you're looking at it's like putting shades on your lenses now this is not to protect the lenses it's to introduce darkness into your frame so when it's darker you can use the aperture you want as low as you want in broad daylight as long as you have an ND filter now ND filters are rated by stops so like uh, I'm not particularly sure with the integer to use right now but for example your ND filter allows for eight stops uh, eight stops of reduction that means you can probably put your shutter speed around 200 or so and then your aperture wide open you'll be able to get uh, a balanced uh, frame out of it so this is a uh, lens attach right so what else i believe yeah we also have well at least for this one uh there is a video mode this mainly defaults to a continuous autofocus and uh auto or program you should be wary because sometimes when you're on CAF and you're shooting a video if your lens is not fully compatible with what you're currently using there will be or there might be some noise when it tries to refocus and because you're on continuous AF it will try to do this whenever it detects a closer object on the frame and focus pull is not the uh, it's not a very simple thing to do pulling focus that's some something another a phrase for you there mm, you have scenes 
So these are predetermined settings that will give you a special effect, but we don't need that nowadays. And then art, which is basically the same thing, but with more artistic filters on it. Then yeah, that's the entire dial, at least for the EM1. And yeah, we should stop right there because that's already a significant chunk to uh, understand. And I hope you learned something again today and I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Good night.